Azure Pipelines has a very useful feature that allows you to create templates with tasks you want to share and use them across different pipelines. In today's video, we are going to see what templates are, why they are important, and how to use them. Let's get into it. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Code Day. Today, I want to talk about Azure Pipelines and specifically about YAML templates. Templates allow us to define reusable content, logic, and parameters, keeping our main pipeline's definition focused on the application. They are also a great way of sharing common logic in a centralized way without duplicating it in many pipelines. Essentially, we can define reusable code in different templates. If you worked in the past with task groups for the classic pipelines, YAML templates are somehow similar, but way more powerful. We can, in fact, include templates within templates and define four different kinds of templates. We can have stage templates to define a set of stages of related jobs, job templates to define a collection of steps run by an agent, step templates to define a linear sequence of operations for a job, and finally, variable templates as an alternative to hard-coded values or variable groups. Just as a side note, Azure Pipelines currently support up to 100 template files for each pipeline and no more than 20 levels of nesting, which is templates within templates. If you find yourself to require more than that, I think it's time for you to re-architect your pipeline because, you know, it's getting quite complex. Anyway, why are YAML templates so important? Well, there are a number of reasons. First, as guardrails provide boundaries within a road, we can use templates for the same purpose on a pipeline. In fact, using templates, we can provide alignment to architecture, security, or development practices. Do you have some tasks or operations that every pipeline have to do? Well, make it part of a template and enforce a policy to make sure all the pipelines use that template. If you want to know how to enforce that policy, you can check the video I made about environments, gates, and checks. You can find the link up here and in the video description. Other reasons are consistency and speed. Organizing, in fact, the most common use operations and tasks in templates will shorten the development period for a pipeline. Let's say that you often build container images for your software. And to do so, you have to add many steps to build the image, tag it properly, test it for vulnerabilities, and finally, push it to a container registry. That is easily a four or five steps process that you need to configure every time. If instead you save that into a template, you will have to use a single step in your pipeline, which is the template, passing it only the parameters that change, like the image name, repo name, etc., making it much faster to write. Also, by doing so, you make sure that all your pipelines building images are consistent with one another because they use the same template. And of course, the container image build is just an example. These apply to basically any recurrent operation you can think of. Moreover, if you have many pipelines using the same template, changes become very easy to make. What if you perform some operation in many pipelines and you realize that you need to change a parameter or maybe the command change in a new version of a tool? If you're not using templates, you will need to go into each and every pipeline definition and make that change. If instead you're using a template for that operation, you just have to change that template and the job is done. All the next pipelines runs will use the modified version. Finally, using templates allows you to keep your pipeline definition simpler, focusing only on the application-specific tasks and operations. But enough talking, let's see now how we can build our templates and how we can use them. But before we move into that, hit the like button below if you're enjoying this video or you find it insightful. It will help this video to be recommended to other viewers and would mean a lot to me. First of all, to create template files, you don't follow the same approach for pipelines. You don't go to the pipeline section, but you need to create directly the files into the repo. Usually the templates are put in a templates folder, but that is totally optional. And they can have either the YML or the YAML extension. Since writing YAML directly in a text file is not that easy, we all know that YAML is quite picky with syntax, etc. One recommended approach is to use the pipeline editor to fill in the YAML and then take the YAML and put it in a separate file. Here I have four kinds of templates. Step templates, stages templates, and job templates. Plus I have a jobs template with parameter that we will see later. Let's take a look first at the step template. As you can see here, it's just a snippet of a pipeline basically in which I'm going to define the steps and in each step, one or more tasks that have to be executed. 
and this can be any kind of task that you will normally execute inside a pipeline. The steps template is the lowest level of template we can have. We cannot have a template just for a single task because that wouldn't make sense. To see how this works, let's move to the pipeline section. Here I have this templates one steps pipeline, which uses the steps template. In fact, as you can see here, this is a normal pipeline with the trigger, with the job definition. But as you can see inside the job, we have the template call. This is the template file I've just shown you. And an interesting thing here is that if you look at the other job, we do have the template, but we can also see that we can actually have normal steps together with the template as well, as you can see here and here. So this job here will only use the steps inside the template, while this other job over here will use both the steps defined in the pipeline and the step from the template. Let's see this in action. Let's run it. And if we open the running one, we can see that we have the script from the pipeline, the execution of the template, and finally, the other script from the pipeline. While if we open the Linux one, we can see that we only have the tasks defining the template because that specific job didn't have any other task. Let's go back and see the jobs template. As you can see here, the jobs template is very similar in the sense that it's just a snippet of YAML from a pipeline. But in this case, it has the jobs keyword and it defines two jobs inside it. We have the Ubuntu job and the Windows job. Once again, if we want to see this in action, we can go to the template to jobs pipeline and we can see here that once again, we have the template keyword that links this template file to this pipeline. We also have another job, which is a job that belongs to the pipeline directly. Let's see this in action. And I would expect to have three jobs, the two defining the template and the one defined in the pipeline directly. And in fact, here we have it. We have the Ubuntu, the Windows and the job from the pipeline. Lastly, let's take a look at the stages template. Once again, just simple YAML, but this time we have the stages keyword. And this contains the whole structure from stages, jobs, steps, and tasks. For the last time, if we want to take a look at the pipeline, let's see the templates three stages. We can see that once again, we have the template usage, which uses the file I just shown you. And as before, we also have another stage that belongs directly to the pipeline. If we run this, we can see that we have the two stages. This one from the pipeline is executed first because it's first in the pipeline definition. And then we also have, of course, this stage from template, which is the one defined in the template file. Of course, these three templates types can be mixed and matched. As I said before, they can be nested, which means that I can have, for example, a stages template that inside utilize a bunch of job templates and those job templates inside may use some steps templates and so on and so forth. Cool, right? This was very simple, wasn't it? Let's make it a little bit more realistic now, passing it some parameters. Passing parameters to a template is really easy. Let's take a look at this. This is the part we've seen before, which contains the jobs. But in this template, we also have over here this parameters section. And I have two parameters in here, the job name and the VM image. And each one has a default value. The default value is useful in case you don't want to pass a specific parameter or for some reason that parameter is null. And in that case, of course, the default value will be used instead. If we take a look at the bottom part of the template, we see how we can use parameters. It's basically like a normal variable using the dollar parentheses parentheses syntax. And we just use the parameters keyword plus the name of the parameter. In this case, parameters.jobName or parameters.vmimage. What is really interesting here, I can even define the name of the job with the parameter and everything in it. To pass these parameters to the template, of course, we need to change our pipeline definition. And I've done so in the templates for parameters. If we see its structure, we can see how to use the parameters. As you can see here, I use the same template twice, but then I have these parameters keywords over here. And in each one, I'm sending a value for both parameter, once to Linux with the VM image Ubuntu 16.04, 
and the other one for Windows with VS 2017, Win 2016. As I said before, since I set the default value for these parameters, I could, for example, not specify the job name if I wanted to, and the template would use the default value. Let's see this in action. But as you can expect, we will have two jobs, one running on Linux and one running on Windows. And in fact, so it is. And this was also easy, right? But what if I need to pass to that template a parameter that is an output variable from the results of other tasks? Well, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. Based on what we've seen so far, to use a parameter that is an output variable from another job, we would do something like this, right? We would define a parameter. Let's say that the storage account name comes from an ARM deployment, so we don't have it or coded. It comes from another step, which is in the pipeline. And then in the pipeline, we will set the value for this parameter. And finally, we will reuse the value in this way with parameters dot the name of the parameter. Unfortunately, if we do this, our pipeline will fail because output variables from other tasks are not expanded if we use this syntax. So in here, instead of finding my actual storage account name, I will find the expression that allows me to use the output variable as the one, for example, that you can see on the bottom of the screen. If we want to have the actual storage account name, we need to use a little workaround. In fact, before using that parameter, we need to transform it, if you will, or more correctly, we need to assign its value to a variable. When we do this operation, in fact, the expression that is contained in the parameter is actually evaluated, is expanded, and the actual value is assigned to the variable. And then in the steps, we actually have to use the variable name instead of the parameter. If we do this, everything will work. It's not really very complex, but you need to remember that you need to assign the parameter to a value in order for it to be evaluated if it's an expression. All right, I think that's enough for today. This was an introduction to the Azure Pipelines templates. And in the next video, we will go deeper into this concept, looking at more complex examples and scenarios. If you're interested into it, you may consider subscribing so you will not miss the new video. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about the Azure Pipeline templates and if you use it already. Azure Pipelines is a very usual, usual, just as a side note, templates, no. Well, there are a number of, mm. as guard lights, guard lights, as guard light, mm. as guardrails, changes become very easy to do, easy. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave.